Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be filming part two of my February book haul. Part one went up not too long ago and was a kind of birthday book haul unboxing. So that does have the majority of my February book haul in here, but I did receive some books before my birthday and a few belated presents afterwards. So I thought I'd do a kind of part two, separate them into two smaller sections because I think it was definitely needed. All of the books in this haul were gifted to me, whether that be books sent by publishers, books that I received, in subscription boxes that I got for free or books sent by friends so again thank you so so much to everybody who has contributed to this and let's just get right into it. <laughs> Starting with the two books that were sent to me by publishers the first one is from the History Press and this is Animal Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland written by Sharon Jacksteers. I feel like you guys will know why I said yes to this. <laughs> This one doesn't take too much explanation because it basically says it all in the title but of course I got this one because I can add it to my collection of folktale books and I'm very very excited about it. I haven't actually read too much about animal specific folktales so I'm very excited to see what's in here especially because it is focused on Britain and Ireland so it's going to be very local to me or at least more local than say Greek mythology. <laughs> the contents page is split into Running Wild field and farm, making waves, creeping, crawling and scuttling on the wing and reclaiming the right to roam. Each of those sections do come with an illustrated cover like this and I just think it's going to be really fun to read about. So thank you so so much to the folks at the History Press for sending this one my way. I know they have a whole collection of folklore books so I'll try to remember to leave a link to that down in the description box in case you guys are interested. The other book that I received from a publisher in February was sent to me by Candlewick Press so thank you so so much to them for sending me Mermaid Moon by Suzanne Kokal. I believe this one might be a retelling of The Little Mermaid but it didn't say it explicitly anywhere on the press release. It just has a lot of parallels with that story. So this one follows a mermaid whose mother is a human from the land but when she was born a witch forced her mother and all the people on the land to forget about her existence. But Sana, the main character, has always longed to meet her mother and so she becomes an apprentice to the witch and fashions herself a pair of legs so that she can go ashore and find her. But then, rather mysteriously, the last sentence says, there, Sauna stumbles into a wall of white roses and a community desperate for a miracle and into a baroness who would do anything to live forever. So I'm not entirely sure if this is a retelling of The Little Mermaid or just vaguely inspired by it or even just a mermaid story but it does have parallels with the, the witchy elements to the story and the fashioning of legs to go ashore and find somebody but I am very intrigued about that final sentence bringing in a miracle and immortality. I'm just... I'm very intrigued about this book so I had to say yes. It's absolutely stunning like this just looks like a piece of renaissance art or something. So I'm very very glad to have received this one. Next up I have two books from my Fairy Loot subscriptions that I've got. I did recently become a rep for Fairy Loot for three months and so I ended up receiving both my January and my February boxes in February because my January one turned up a little bit late. I do have full unboxings for both of those videos where I actually talk about whether the items are not only pretty and nice to look at but whether they're actually useful and things that I would use in my day-to-day -day life. So I'll leave a link to those down below if you'd like to see my reactions, my thoughts and things like that. But the two books that I received in those were Woven in Moonlight by Isabel Ibanez. This one follows a girl called Zimena who is a decoy condessa. That means that she is a kind of stand-in for the last remaining royal in order to keep the actual remaining royal safe. Her people lost everything when the usurper Atok used an ancient relic to gain power and destroy their land and so Zimena has this very strong need for revenge. But then, lo and behold, Atok actually demands the real Condessa's hand in marriage and so it's up to Zimena to take her place. Zimena snaps up this opportunity because obviously she will then be closer to getting her revenge but she finds out that there could be a way to overthrow the usurper without causing outright war if only she turns her back on this idea of revenge. One thing that really intrigues me is that this cover doesn't suggest revenge and murder and war. <laughs> so I feel like if the cover is anything to go by, which it should be because that's a cover artist's job, this could be quite an atmospheric book full with lots of world building. And this is inspired by Bolivian politics, which is something that I've never heard of in a fantasy book, so I'm very intrigued to see what this one is like. And all I've seen from people who have read it so far is words of praise, so hopefully I will follow suit. <laughs> and then from the February Fairy Loot box, this is going to reflect awfully on camera. <laughs> But this book is The Shadows Between Us by Tricia Levenseller. See what I mean? It's awfully shiny. <laughs> 
This is actually one of my anticipated releases that wasn't in my most anticipated releases of 2020 video because I discovered it after I filmed that one, which is just typical. But as soon as I heard about this one, I just had to have it and I knew it was coming in the February fairy loot, so I was so excited to actually receive it. This one is a very slithering kind of book. It follows a main character who is very cunning, quite stabby, will get her own way. I'm here for it. It follows a girl called Alessandra who is tired of being overlooked and she knows that she deserves more than what she's got right now. So to raise her ranks in the world, she comes up with a plan to woo and marry the Shadow King so that once the marriage is legitimate, she can kill him and take over his kingdom. She's not the only one who wants to kill the Shadow King though and so she has to keep him alive long enough for her to kill him. <laughs> I am just so, so ready for this. It sounds so dark and twisted and... I love it. I love it so much. This is another fantasy book by the way. It's said that the Shadow King can control shadows and that's why he's called that. But I'm really hoping to get to this one soon. Hopefully in March. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> so then for the rest of this video we have books that were gifted to me by friends. The first one being Claire. Claire did make it into February book haul part one as well because she is kind of ridiculous and just so so supportive and sends a ridiculous amount of things. So once again Claire, I cannot thank you enough for these. There are three books here. But the first book that Claire sent me was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson which I was so so thrilled about because I was going to buy this one anyway because I'm hoping to take part in Cosmere Along hosted by Rachel from Rachel Marie's book journey and this is the first book. This book has one of those synopses which I find really difficult to explain so I I can't wait to actually read this just so that I can give a better explanation. But from what I can gather, Elantris is a place that used to be full of magical people or demigods of sort. Until one day magic just failed and they've been left with a barren land, no magic. I don't know too much about the actual plot but I imagine it's going to go towards getting this magic back. It does say on the back something about magic still living so I presume we're going to get to that point in this book so again this is another one that I'm hoping to read soon hopefully I'll start it in March which doesn't quite add up to the timeline that Rachel has put on for Cosmere Along but I have read The Final Empire which is the book that comes after this so I think I'm going to take my time reading this one and then join in with the actual timeline from The Well of Ascension onwards if I can keep up with it. <laughs> The next book that Claire sent me is The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackworth. This one is based around a library where every book that's left unfinished, unwritten, is sent there so that the characters and the things inside the story don't escape into the real world looking for their ending. The main character of this one is a librarian who is in charge of keeping everything in their rightful place until one day a bald-headed hero escapes, which ends up being a much bigger problem than you would initially think because it comes with demons. And the final sentence on the back says that a simple retrieval goes horrifyingly wrong in a chase that threatens to reshape the boundaries between heaven, hell and earth. I really want to see how it works with characters coming out of their stories, if there's lots of different kind of worlds and what these boundaries are between heaven, hell and earth and just how that all connects together. I've seen nothing but good things about this book and I think Claire has it too so hopefully we'll be buddy reading this when both of us have time. God help us trying to organise that but the intention is definitely there and I cannot wait. And then the final book that Claire got me is vastly different to the other two because this one is a middle grade, The Girl Who Jack Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This one just sounds so charming and I already love it. This one is based around a community who every single year they sacrifice a baby to a nearby witch in order to guarantee their protection for another year. But it just so happens that this community lives nearby a nice witch who takes the babies in before passing them on to another family who will raise and look after them. During the journey to their new homes, the witch feeds them starlight but when it comes to this one baby in particular, she accidentally feeds her moonlight, which unexpectedly gives her magical powers. The witch decides to keep this baby and call her Luna, raising her as her own. Skip to 12 years later with Luna's 13th birthday approaching and her magic starts to emerge, which comes along with dangerous, but also quite brilliant consequences. I also know that there is a teeny tiny dragon in this book who apparently thinks he is huge and really scary, which... I mean... I'm here to read about the Chihuahua of Dragons. <laughs> I just think it sounds so cute and I cannot wait to read it. So thank you so, so much Claire for this one too. Sticking to the middle grade theme, I also have two books from Gavin, which were kind of like early birthday presents. He gifted me Nevermore and Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is a very well beloved middle grade series. So, so many people have been raving about it in the past year or so, Gavin and Becca especially. And you know what? I'm going to leave it to Gavin and Becca to explain because in my vlog where I visited them, 
They did a rather spectacular job. Uh, why don't we do that thing where we um, have to finish each other's sentence thing? Sandwiches. So, um, <laughs> Morrigan. Crow. There's a word. You can't... Uh, let's show it to a word then. Morrigan. Crow. Gets. <laughs> <laughs> so much shit at this. Come on. Good thing of one word. She's on it. Uh, th this is a man on well, I have a script for this. Gets. Um, taken. To. The. Place. Called. Nevermore. By. Jupiter. North. Who. Is. Stunning. Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Which is stunning. Um, then. He. Tells. Her. That. She. Must. Compete. In. A. Tournament. To. Prove. That. She. Is. Magical. <laughs> That's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I think we did so well with that. Yeah. 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 Do with that what you will. <laughs> Either way, I'm so, so thankful that Gavin has got me these. I think they'll be perfect for Believe-a-thon when that comes back. I will say that I do have high expectations for these books though because I've not seen anybody dislike it, so... Bold claims have been made, my expectations have been raised. And then finally, I have two books that were sent to me by Cody, which turned up just after I finished filming my birthday book haul. So they weren't quite included in that, but they were for my birthday, so thank you so, so much, Cody, for these. And there's definitely a theme, because these are both folklore collections, the first one being Japanese Tales, a collection of classic Japanese folk tales. I think I said in my first book haul that I don't know that much of Japanese folklore. And again, this is a collection that's been recommended many, many times whenever I've been looking it up. I don't recognise any of the titles in the contents page, so I'm very excited to, you know, have a flip through this, learn more about a culture's folk tales that I don't know anything about. And then the second collection is the Anthology of Scottish Folk Tales, which is absolutely stunning. And she sent me this one knowing that I already have a collection of Scottish folklore, but she said that this one is pretty, but it actually is very different. The one that I already have is just like a mix of lots of different kinds of stories, whereas this one is actually organised by geographical area and has a lot of different folklore from the one that I already have. So again, very, very excited about this one. Don't need to say too much else about it because the title pretty much says it all, but... Thank you so, so much, Cody, for these two and for building my collection. You know how much I love Scotland and Edinburgh and I am determined to visit again. I need to make this a thing and I'm sure this will motivate me all the more, so thank you. <laughs> So that is it for part two of my February book haul. My goodness, I cannot believe I had to split this into two separate parts. <laughs> I don't know when I'll next have a book haul because I have shut my Amazon wish list and I don't really intend on buying too many because I need to catch up on my reading. So it might be a little while before you see another one. We'll see. I always say that and then end up filming another one the next month, but what can you do? <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the things I've mentioned in this video, my social media and other bookish stuff as well, so I'll be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!